In this tutorial, we will see how to turn a storyboard into an animatic. Here we can see a storyboard that has been made, but at the moment is just a storyboard, it's not an animatic yet. To turn it into an animatic, we will use the timeline view for the storyboard, this little button just here. This view actually allows you to see the storyboard just like in a timeline. And so, in order to increase the duration of each layer, you'll just have to put your cursor like this at the end of a clip in order to make up here a double arrow and hold the click and move to the right or to the left to increase or decrease the duration of the layer. And so repeat the process Now let's play to see the result. Have you noticed some clips didn't show a proper result? If I remember well, it was, yes, this clip and this one. Let's double click and understand why they are not working well. Oh, the problem is the pose behavior just here. Actually, you can see that um, this layer is using the pose behavior hold and this one is using the pose behavior known. Actually, when you are increasing or decreasing the size of a clip like this, you are not increasing the duration of a layer, but you are using a markout point just symbolized here with this red line. This is thanks to the markout that an image is held during 17 images. If one of the layers is not in hold mode, if the pose behavior is not in hold mode, well, its content disappears. So if I change the pose behavior like this, no problem anymore. And so I can do the same process here and also for this one. Much better, even if the timing is not really good, but it's not the purpose of the tutorial to teach you how to do an animatic, just how to do an animatic with TV Paint. If you have watched the previous tutorial, you remember that you have the possibility to hide a clip. If you hide a clip, this clip will disappear from the animatic. You also notice that we have a gray area around um, the drawing space, and when I play it, it disappears. Actually, this gray area is what we call the viewfinder, and the viewfinder is set in place when you have a camera. A camera can be used when you click on this icon just here in the main panel. A camera is always defined with a project. But when you create a project, you have the possibility to create a project with camera. Let me explain. I will create a new project. So by default, and if you have watched the other tutorials, I explained to you how to create a new project, a project, a simple new project. If you click here in new project and you hit the camera button, the camera will fit the drawing space. In some case, especially for example in this case where I plan to have a camera move, for example here with the little uh, sparrows crossing the screen and uh, for example, yes, I would like to follow the sparrows and then end on the, the girl. By the way, I'm mixing, it's not a sparrow, it's a swift. Sorry for the vocabulary. So whatever, if I want to follow this <laughs> dumb bird and then stop on these little girls, I have to define a drawing area and a camera. To do so, I hit again project and I will click on project with camera. 
And here I have to define two places. I have to define the camera view. So the camera view is this view that corresponds for the final output when I will export my project, I will have this view. And we have the drawing area. So drawing area can be much bigger than the camera view. So for example, if you plan to make some traveling from the left to the right, for example, imagine you're just changing the ratio. The ratio is just the, not a zoom ratio, but a multiplicator. Now I would like to have something much bigger, something much wider like this. So now I can click on new project and I have a very long drawing space and a tiny camera that can move from left to the right without any problem. This viewfinder, this grey area, can be changed uh, or can be disabled in two, two ways. If you just want to uh, disable the camera view, you can go on the display button just here and disable show camera. And then if you take a drawing tool, you won't see the camera anymore. If you would like to see the camera but not the viewfinder, you can go into Windows, Show, Display Settings. And here you have the viewfinder, so you can lower the transparency. You can even change the color if you want to see the life in pink. I know I have already made this joke, but I like it, sorry. You can also change the color of the camera. The little rectangle just here. So now let's create a camera move because at the moment I just have a camera but I don't have any camera move. To create a camera move, so let's focus on this clip and let's click on the camera tool just here. So say I would like to focus first on the Swift. And now I would like, so I've just defined the first position of my camera and I would like then the camera stops on the girl at the near from the tree. So to define the final position of the camera, I have to click, make a second click on the drawing space, like this. Then I can move this camera just by holding the little handle at the middle, like this. But here I've just defined two positions. I haven't defined yet a camera move. To define a camera move, I have to give a duration to my layer. Okay, we, already, uh, we have already given a duration to my clip by using the mark in mark out uh, option, but it's not enough for the camera tool. The camera tool needs um, a real layer duration. So I will switch off the mark out and I will increase one of those layers. Any layer is good, it doesn't make any difference since the other layers have a pause behavior in hold mode. And so now we should see the camera move. Yes, awesome. If you want to play the animation and see the camera move, the camera point of view, you have to click on this icon just here. Then hit the play button. You can also, when you are scrubbing like this and you see the camera move, you have the possibility to fix the camera move at a place and moving the drawing space uh, without affecting the camera. Just follow what I'm doing. I will click on display and I will click here on follow camera. And now the camera won't move, but the drawing space will move. You see the difference? I hope so. Here with my camera move, something really important to understand, this camera adapts itself following the duration of the layer. I mean, if I lower the duration of my layer, the camera move will be then faster. And 
and if I increase the duration of my layer, the movement will be slower. You also have the possibility to add intermediary position just by clicking here on the blue string between the two positions. So I click on the blue string and I can put another position like this and like this, for example. You also have the possibility to change the size of a camera by using the handles. And even rotate the camera like this. Be careful if you are rotating or rescaling or just moving the camera, don't go outside the drawing area or you'll have a black mark here. You have many camera options here in the tool panel. And so, for example, you can also manage what we call the time profile. You'll notice here my camera move is... Um, Constant, I mean, is very linear. If I want to change this, I can click on the time profile and change the timing of this camera. I just increase a little bit the stuff. Okay, so you can see here it's moving simultaneously. And so, for example, I can decide the camera move will stop here put a point, and it will stop until image 40. And then it will continue its move. We can also play with delays, I mean, on splines. So to do so, I will change from linear to spline like this. And so the camera move will start slowly and will stop slowly. Like this. You can also add some motion blur to give uh, a feeling of movement. You can also move each camera individually by changing the X and Y value. You can eventually lock them. You can also lock all camera and so you can't change them anymore. You can also manage the rotation like this and the zoom ratio. Little word about the zoom ratio. So um, the camera move actually is just um, a pre-production tool. I mean it's not supposed to be used as a post-composing tool. It's just here for the storyboard animatic process. Anyway, if you want to uh, apply a camera move and render it, be careful to never use a zoom ratio under 100%. Because uh, so you can have something bigger, it's, there's no problem about it, but if you have something smaller like this, it means you will zoom inside the pixels, and when you zoom in the pixel, that's ugly. So... If you want to render, to use the camera tool for the final rendering, never have a zoom ratio under 100%. You also have all the parameters available here. You click on them. So you can change the camera uh, format. Here I have something completely different. You can also add other information like the four-third borders. 
And so it's really interesting, especially for TV series, since uh, there are still people using very old screen TV screens. It's sometimes necessary to know what they may lose uh, in their um, when they will watch the um, TV series. And also, you can use a safe area that you can define just like this. And it really tells you where are the border where you should never write text. Once the camera move has been placed, we can see it on the storyboard. And we can even see the camera move when we place the cursor above the little clip. Last but not least, adding a soundtrack in the project. You can add a soundtrack inside uh, a storyboard by clicking here on add a soundtrack, just here. So in WAVE or MP3, just like in the tutorial about animation and soundtrack. Uh, just like in this tutorial, so yeah, you can watch it to, to know more. You have the possibility to use fade in and fade out. You have the possibility to move the soundtrack. You, you can even add some color groups. But here, the color groups are just visual. There is no other purpose with the soundtracks within the project. So you will notice there are two places where we can load sound. We can load soundtracks within the project and within the clip. So we make the difference between those two places, the global sound and the local sound. The global sound is the sound located in the project and the local sound is the sound located within the clip, just in this area. Actually, in the global sound, so inside the project, you will use the soundtracks, for example, like um, music used in the whole sequence. And uh, within the clip, you will use the peculiar song, the specific sound, like a dialogue or a character's knocking the door. That's how you're supposed to use the global and the local sound. The title and last feature regarding the sound, you have the possibility to make a right click on the sound and speak the track into each clip. And so you can then take the, the time to work separately on each sequence with the sound. 